why do we need tamper-resistant receptacles? Tamper-resistant receptacles are the most annoying things to deal with. Most customers hate them when you put them in a new house. They're a pain in the butt to plug devices in because um, they've got these little flat things. So what's the deal? Why are they required? The reason that we have tamper resistant receptacles is that children have gotten electrocuted. A lot of them. <laughs> Most kids are idiots. I have one, I can say that. Uh, but you know, little children are curious and they're always trying to stick stuff in other stuff. So a lot of kids were sticking hairpins and uh, you know, like paper clips and keys and stuff into receptacles and getting electrocuted. So there was uh, a time where there, people were like, we'll just put, you know, like these little plastic caps. Um, it, kids were able to get them off and then they would swallow them and choke on them. So it really wasn't a good idea. So then there was this whole like slide open cover thing that you could put over receptacles, but really like any kid over two years old could sit and watch their parents, you know, slide it open and they could learn how to do it. So really the best thing is having a receptacle where this protection is already involved in it. So on the inside, there's these little flaps, basically how a tamper resistant receptacle works is on the inside, there's a, a, a loaded spring and there's these two little flapped doors on the inside. And the only way to get these flaps to open up to be able to plug something inside is by equal pressure to both of them. So on the hot and the neutral side, uh, when you have a plug, like a 15 amp or 20 amp receptacle or a, a plug, and you stick it into the receptacle, both prongs of that plug are applying equal pressure. Now this always doesn't work. Uh, some of them are just pieces of crap. So you have to kind of wiggle them a little bit to get them to work. But either way, it's it's more work for an adult to try to get something in at the cost of safening your house so that a child can't stick something in. Um, if you try to stick something in just one side, those little springs won't release and one of the, both of the doors won't flap open. One of them won't even flap open. So um, you have to apply equal pressure with both prongs to be able to plug something in. So that's really the best thing for children to not get electrocuted. Now the timeline for how all this happened is back in 1981, um, there were pediatric care facilities. So, you know, places were children were going and they were going to the doctor and they would get uh, electrocuted at these healthcare facilities. So in 517 of code, we've got healthcare facilities. Now we have um, requirements for tamper resistant outlets in these areas. And then in 1984, psychiatric wards uh, were added. And then over time, like 1993, that was taken out. But I think it was really just the wording of the type of occupancies that were installed. So there's certain um, assisted living institutions that I think that that more pertains to, but really anything where somebody could stick something in. And again, mostly this is aimed at children. Most of the time adults aren't going to do this, but there are certain places where adults may still have this as a possibility. Then in 1990, the, the terminology changed. At first it was called tamper-proof uh, receptacles. Now it's called tamper-resistant receptacles. So what does code say about it? If you open up 40612 in uh, the National Electric Code, I'm looking in the 2020 code, uh, it says that all 15 and 20 amp, 125 and 250 volt non-locking type receptacles in the areas specified in 406.121 through 8 shall be listed tamper resistant receptacles. So just that right there is saying only 15 and 20 amp receptacles, even if they're 125 volt or 250 volt, we're not talking about the big 30 amp and 50 amp receptacles that are 250 uh, or 250 volt rated. We're only talking about the small guys, the, the 15 and 20 amp 250 volt rated receptacles. Uh, so it says in the areas uh, below, so uh, dwelling units, this includes detached garages, accessory buildings, dwelling units, and common areas of family, multifamily dwellings uh, specified in 210.52 and 550.13. Any guest rooms, guest suites of hotels, motels, and their common areas. Again, any place where children might be to be able to stick stuff in here. Child care facilities, duh. Preschools and educational facilities, duh. Um, business offices, corridors, waiting rooms, and the like. 
and the like. I hate when the National Electric Code puts things like that and similar areas. Like, come on, man, that's a relative term. You can't even really apply common sense to something so relative like that. You should be very specific in, in, in listing them. Um, waiting rooms and the like. Uh, in clinics, medical and dental offices and outpatient facilities. A uh, subset of assembly occup uh, occupancies described in 518.2 to include places of awaiting transportation, gymnasiums, skating rinks, and auditoriums. And then we've got dormitory units, and then we have assisted living facilities. There's an informational uh, note below that says an assisted living facility is an institutional use group I-1 per the IBC 2015. That's the International Building Code. Um, so if you want to know a little bit more about what they're considering an assisted living facility, you can go look in there. Now, there are some exceptions to this. Uh, exceptions to all of those areas listed above are, uh, it says receptacles in the following locations shall not be required to be tamper resistant. So this is where you can get away with them not having, you not having to put them in. Um, any receptacles located more than five and a half feet above the floor. That's pretty awesome. If you got like a TV or something mounted somewhere, or you've got receptacles up in an Eve and you're hanging Christmas lights or something like that, like no little child is going to be able to get to that. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, receptacles that are part of a luminaire or appliance, again, you're probably going to be way up on a ladder changing out a light fixture or something, not something a kid's likely to interact with. Uh, next is a single receptacle or duplex receptacle for two appliances located within a dedicated space for each appliance that in normal use is not easily moved from one place to the other and that is cord and plug connected in accordance with 400.10, A6, A7, or A8. So again, like this is, a child's probably not going to go take a microwave and pull a microwave out just to get in and start messing around with the receptacle. And if they are, they're probably smart enough to figure out how to bypass this whole system to begin with. Some kids are shifty. <laughs> um, but anyway, so like, you know, appliances that are removable, that are cord and plug connected um, in a dedicated space. And then lastly, we have non-grounding type receptacles used for replacements as permitted in 406.4 D2A. So there's houses that don't have an actual grounding conductor, an equipment grounding conductor. So there's specific applications in code in 406.4 D2A where you can look um, and these specific types of receptacles that are non-grounding type receptacles don't have to worry about this. I found this interesting little infographic that uh, shows kind of the, the numbers of people that have been injured over time. So according to the Consumer Protection Safety Commission, there's an average of 4,963 injuries caused by electrical receptacles between 2008 and 2016, with the majority of injuries occurring in children under the age of 18. 40% um, of them are from bobby pins or hair pins. 21% is because of fingers. I don't even know, like, how do you have a small enough finger to be electrocuted I guess that's just electrical receptacles in general. That could be like a plate not on a receptacle and they're getting their fingers in there and touching, you know, the receptacles. That's a large amount. Like that's the second largest amount. Um, so that doesn't even have anything to do with the tamper resistant nature of these devices. 20% is other, which that's a huge, that's the third largest percentage. So basically 41% of the people are not even getting shopped because of sticking something in those flaps. It's really 40% are the bobby pin and hairpin, 4% are paper clips, 12% are keys. So I would say that this probably knocks out about 50% of the cases, um, maybe a little bit more than 50% of the cases, but still this doesn't protect against you know, kids taking receptacle covers off or there being a broken receptacle and still touching their fingers on something. Um, it seems like that's about half the cases. And then I have another infographic too that uh, it kind of shows like what the flaps look like, um, how they're spring loaded and how they actually work. Um, and it gives you a little bit more information as well. And that's another ESFI.org uh, image. And this one says each year approximately 24,000 children are treated from shocks and burns after sticking items into the slots of electrical receptacles. Um, to prevent these types of injuries, the National Electric Code now requires TRRs or tamper-resistant receptacles in new and renovated homes. So that seems a little weird, right? Like that says 24,000 children approximately each year are treated. Um, this says an average of 2,850 children are injured by receptacles each year. And then it says there's an average 
of 4,963 injuries caused between 2008 and 2016. So a lot of those numbers don't add up to be the same thing. If there's 2,850 on average, cases per year, that adds up to way more than 4,963 over eight years of time. Um, and also the same, the same group of people have the second infographic, uh, which says that 24,000 children are treated from shocks and burns after sticking slots into electrical rooms or electrical receptacles every year. So the numbers might be a little funny. I don't know that I would necessarily trust this 100%, but either way, I thought that they were really good infographics and it doesn't matter either way. We still gotta put these things in as electricians. So just figured that might be a little bit of information so you guys know some more stuff. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns below, and I will see you guys in the next episode.